First Watch with Sheriff Mark Daniels on KWCD Bisbee Sierra Vista. Hosted by Public Information Officers Carol Kappas and Grady Butler. First Watch is brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. And welcome to your Friday. With me is Carol Kappas and Sheriff Mark Daniels. Good morning. Good morning, Cochise County. Hello, everyone. So let's start with Top Cop. That's today. What is Top Cop? Top Cop's a program, and Carol's been pretty much the uh, coordinator of that program, where we recognize the top cop in Cochise County from state, local, and federal. So all the agencies get to do a nomination, and then a community group actually looks at all the nominations from every agency, and then they pick their top cop. I don't know who it is. I mean, Carol, I'm sure you do, but I don't know who it is. And when we announce it today here at lunchtime, that will be the top cop in Cochise County. So this is our fifth year, I think? The seventh. Seventh year, where's time go? So in front of me in the studio today is the different awards. Pretty impressive for the top cop. What a neat thing to have. I think it's important for people to understand um, this does bring all of our agencies together. They have the opportunity to make a nomination. Some didn't um, do that, but others did. So we have people like Park Service. Uh, we have Department of Transportation, um, Enforcement Compliance Division. You know, they have great teams out of Douglas and Wilcox, and then they have the different, um, the FBI submitted a nomination. The so FBI did this year? They did. Wow. They did. So, um, well, well, they I, are good at paperwork. <laughs> a lot of different That's a joke, ones. Right? Um, Adam, if you, Adam's a supervisor. If you're listening to Adam, sorry. Yes, I had to say that. <laughs> and Home, Homeland Security Investigations also had like a huge write-up. So a lot of good things that people do behind the scenes, not looking for recognition, and that's the beauty of this whole thing. Well, it is, and it takes these these law enforcement professionals from all the levels that have gone above and beyond that feel their agency organization feels they need to be recognized and today's their day so uh and again the awards i'm looking at the coins i'm looking at girl yeah you did well again what i'm seeing i tell you this top cop award pretty impressive and so we also had awards yesterday for our organization our department and so what we do is um, yearly, there's an award ceremony put together, and they recognize quarterly um, employees of the quarter for different disciplines. So it's support services, patrol, detention, um, volunteer, and then you also have the awards uh, for the employees of the year in all of those same disciplines. And then unit citations and, and whatnot. So how did it go yesterday? It went really well. It was packed. The room was packed. and. Uh, we uh, we recognize promotions, so our corporals and sergeants, and then we recognize service awards. Uh, these are these are awards where people have been here five, ten years, twenty five years, and we recognize that tenure. Just the loyalty retention side of that, and then we do life saving awards, unit citation awards, letter accommodations, and one of the most exciting parts of the awards is the employees employees of the year. So we break that down into detention officer of the year, civilian of the year, uh, which is our support, and then we do volunteer and then deputy of the year. So pretty exciting day yesterday and um, very competitive. But our civilian of the year who works in our jail is Edith uh, Viela. Viela? Mm -hmm. Say it right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our detention officer of the year is uh, Brasenia Pacheco. And I, got, I always say this about her. When I lived here in town years ago as a young deputy, she was her parents were my neighbor and she was on a tricycle. <laughs> now she's our detention officer of the year, so how time goes. And then our volunteer coming out of the search and rescue division is David Miles. And then the sworn uh, deputy of the year is Sergeant Jesus Davison, uh, the Region 3 Douglas uh, Alfred area. So congratulations to all four of them for going above and beyond and being our employee of the year. Last night, you were on News Nation. Yeah, News Nation did, under with Dan Abrams' show, did a, um, like a border live where, and I wasn't very unfamiliar with what they're going to do. They asked me about two weeks ago if I'd be willing to partake in this. Uh, initially, they thought they'd fly me to New York and be in their studio. Uh, I'd rather stay here and do it virtual. So they, they brought a cameraman out here with me, and then they had... Uh, police chiefs up in the northeast on the panel. They had a sheriff, Mark Lamb, out of Pinal that was actually working the road, uh, working the border. They should have flipped that, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. But um, And then they had uh, Department of Public Safety in Texas working with them. Then they had folks in uh, San Diego, California. So a broad spectrum of the border. 
But I got to say, Dan Abrams did a very good job. Just like just like what they call that patrol live, mm-hmm. very similar, and they kept jumping back and forth to different people. And um, but I, I enjoyed it. But it was funny. I was so I had the monitor in front of me when I was doing this with the cameraman, and so the cameraman producer on my end kept saying, "Okay, you're, you're they're coming to you in two minutes, sheriff." That's okay, good. Well, then they say, "Hey, they're going to the panel." Well, I didn't realize I was part of the panel, so I'm looking down at the monitor, and then in my little ear post, the, the producer on the New York side said, Sheriff, get your eyes up. <laughs> like, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but uh, but either way, it was a really good show. Uh, I talked to them afterwards, and they said, thank you, Sheriff. And I said, I hope you guys continue to do this. And I think it needs to be more I, – I'm not an office guy, which really protects. I like sitting in an office. So I said, let's do this again, but let's get us all out there. Let's get us all out there with my interdiction team. And uh, But it was a really good perspective, not political-based, as they even mentioned there at the beginning – but reality based, and I think that's so important. If you watched that last night, you'd say, "Wow, we got some challenges on this border." And some of the things that we were doing um, over the past weekend, all about animals, you know, had a good turnout for the city of Sierra Vista and in the park. Um, and we're still taking care of the shelter in Douglas, and that's just supposed to go for another little bit. Um, so, if anybody's looking to adopt animals, please. Pay attention to our Facebook. We're going to keep posting animals that are available for adoption. And one day there will be no posts because there will be no animals to adopt because our shelters will be empty. A perfect world. Wouldn't that just be a yes. perfect world? Yes. But that's going to take adult supervision. <laughs> I hate to say it like that, but adults, people need to step up and be responsible. And I hate to say that, but when people adopt and then they let the animal go or they abandon the animal, whatever the case may be, or they neglect it, that's why we're there. And sadly, I don't know if we'll ever see perfection, but we can do a lot better job than we're doing now. I mean, our shelters in this county are full. They're full because irresponsibility in many ways. So, and, and, um, and it's a tough job for animal trial officers. I mean, they see some really bad situations. So thank you to them, but also let's all do our part. And some of my favorite people in the Cochise County Sheriff's Office are the detention officers, and we're wrapping up Detention Officer Week. I had lunch with them on Monday for Detention Officer Week. In fact, they have another lunch today, but we have a conflict with Top Cop. So but I went down there, had lunch, walked through the jail, and I just, I just got to say, but though a younger generation, I feel old when I walk through there, but, but a younger generation, but what a committed, passionate group of people. Truly a job that is my I sent an email earlier in the week recognizing them all to all of them, but a job that many can't do, but the other aspect of which is probably more important, uh, more relevant in this statement is many won't do because it's such a tough job. I mean, they're in there where like when I walk into the pods and I walk down there and they just look at you because all the, uh, and again, uh, they, there's a lot of people in there that are really bad people. They do. And they think about how they can harm you. But these officers down there, they protect it, they, they safeguard it, they do what they have to do. And uh, I, I, I commend them, I, I do, for what they do. And it's also Nurses Week, so let's give a shout-out to the nurses in detention. Yeah, and I, our medical staff over there, in fact, while I was down there, they had an, in, an inmate that was having chest pains, and they were addressing him why I was down there. And, uh, and to all our nurses, I mean, not just in our jail, but all our nurses, to include my wife, Nikki who's a nurse and uh, but all our nurses that I mean they're they're role models in the community they truly are we all talk about doctors you gotta go see the doctor really you're gonna go see a nurse the nurses drive those offices you know just like top cop you know I can get up there and say a few things today but Carol you and Grady especially you Carol that's been coordinating that program for seven years that's driven by you it truly is so there's always every successful program there are the people in the backside nurses are the backside of that our medical staff so thank you to all our medical staff and our nurses and people who volunteer and do great things behind the scenes, search and rescue. They got a statewide award. Um, we're pretty excited about that because they represent Cochise County. So congratulations to our search and rescue team again. They did. They had their annual conference last weekend uh, up in, I think it was Holbrook, up in Holbrook, Arizona. And they were awarded the Unit of the Year Award. I mean, that's a special, special award for them. And that was recognized by the Arizona Search and Rescue Association and Coordinators Association. So thanks to Marty Allred, uh, past Coordinator Dave Nolan, uh, Ursula Ritchie, all of those that have made this team successful over the years. They do an amazing job. And, again, 
congratulations for the 2023-2024 Search and Rescue Team of the Year, so by the state. And on a uh, sad note, we had a volunteer for Search and Rescue who was there many, many years, Fred Todd. Um, and it's unfortunate that he passed. So we want to give our condolences to his family and to all of the search and rescue people who worked, had the opportunity to, and the fortune to work with him. Fred spent his whole life uh, public safety. He's a retired lieutenant from Scottsdale Police Department up in the valley. And then he came down here and has been with search and rescue, our team, for, for years. I mean, he's one of those iconic members that, I mean, just there all the time. And uh, sadly, we lost him last week. Um, so to uh, Fred's family and to Fred, God bless you, my friend, and God bless his family. I mean, he was he'll be truly missed here. And the Academy, which is over at Cochise College this year, they're doing a, a donation, um, and they're looking for, you know, it's like a community outreach. They're looking for a lot of donations, and you guys can help. Listeners can get out there. Well, they can. And, and our police academy here uh, through Cochise College and the partnership, the great partnership we have with them, one of the things they always do, it's, a, it's a kind of a common practice, is every academy is taught the importance of community. And this academy class, which graduates this month, later this month, is donating to the Child and Family Resources. So they're looking for diapers, wipes, backpacks, duffel bags, luggage, anything that's going to help a family. And, and, and you can drop it off, these items, at any law enforcement agency around the county, any police department, any sheriff's substation. Uh, but that's their way of giving back. And I think it's so important they do this concept because the reason we have law enforcement is we have communities. And one of the things that... Um we were talking about is safety, uh, school safety. And that's a big thing, you know, nationwide. Um, we've had an incident in Alfreda that uh, we were notified that a student had been suspended for a completely separate issue. And after that suspension, the principal received information that there was a photo of that kid um, who's 17 and he's on school grounds obviously because they identified the location and he's holding a gun he's pointing it at the at the camera um you know with some derogatory information um we did respond to that call and we ultimately charged the 17 year old as an adult and one of the questions that had come up was why are you charging him as an adult well that was a really serious thing because after his interview he did admit and we did find a loaded weapon that his intent was to um shoot someone because of a beef that they had yeah and, and we take that very serious and every law enforcement i know in this county does the same thing it, with with the violence on educational facilities you bring a gun to campus and then you're in uh, no matter what you're bringing it for you don't bring a gun to campus i mean but second of all his reason to bring it was he wanted to settle a beef so that is why he's charged that's an aggravated crime it's uh, it was an attempt in there. There's an intent in there, which is a we call men a culpable state. Bottom line is he's going to jail and he's going to go to jail as, re as remanded. He's 17 years old, so I get it. I, I get it when people oh he's only a kid. Well, I gotta say this. I mean, we hold people accountable in Cochise County, and the criminal justice system was sorted from there with judges and attorneys. But our point, we take that serious. We want to send a very strong message that this is not going to be tolerated here in Cochise County. Educators, law enforcement, Jackie Clay's office, we work very close to protect our kiddos and our faculty and educational facilities in uh, Cochise County. Last week, you talked about squatters' rights on the show, and this week, it's come up again. Well, it did. It came up on a sad note, and the story is as such. Uh, home here in Cochise County, where the owner of the home doesn't live here. So she had her rented in 2023. Long story short, um, several months ago, they moved out. Well, then she noticed somebody turned the electricity back on. That's how she got notified that somebody was possibly, what's going on? Well, who turned my electricity on? She called the sheriff's office. The deputy went out there. She, he pulls up, and there's a dog running in the front yard. He goes, knock, he knocks on the door. The lady comes out. The house, and I'm just, based on what I've been told, was trashed inside. Trashed inside. Nasty. To include animal feces and uh, on the floor and everywhere. And so long story short, the um, talked to the lady in the house and asked, do you live here? She said, yes, I live here. How do you live here? What's your legal agreement? Why are you here? Long story short, she says, well, I saw it vacant. I was living in my van. 
So I just moved in. Well, long story short, we just had a discussion about this a couple of days ago uh, because is this a landlord tenant or is this a burglary trespass and theft fraud? Because somebody had some to turn on the electricity, you usually need a, a lease. Uh, unless you and we're following up on that. Long story short, I made it very clear to my team this is a criminal act, a felonious act of burglary, trespass, and we'll find out about the fraud if you frauded the electric to get it back on. Bottom line is this, and I want to share this this morning there is no such thing as squatter rights in Arizona that sticks out like, okay, some states, and I was told New York, for example, and if I'm wrong, I'll stand corrected on it has a 10-day window. You leave for 10 days, somebody moves in your house, you have to evict them under a landlord-tenant. I think that's crazy. Other states have a 30-day window. Bottom line is this. In Arizona, you have a right, and I've had citizens call me on this. Sheriff, I'm afraid to go on vacation. Don't go on vacation. Put us on your house check. We do house checks. But second of all, if you come back 30 days, four months, whatever drives you out of the county to go do something, which you have, you have a freedom of movement right not to worry about your house being taken over by a squatter when you come back somebody's living there call us and we will charge them very simple i mean if we give up that in arizona we have lost who we are as a country we have lost who we are uh as arizonians bottom line is they will go to jail that's my commitment to you i promise you that because i can't imagine telling you well sorry there's not much we can do no there is something we can do it's called a burglary and they will go to jail let them answer to the judge or let them tell the judge i believe i'm squatting Good luck. There's a different way of squatting, but you're not going to do it that way. And you being out and about in the community, you have a stop of the week? I do. It's kind of a sad stop of the week. And if this gentleman's listening, um, uh, which I hope he is. So I stopped the vehicle. It's coming from a meeting. I sit at the intersection. Vehicle in front of me. I looked down the registration. It was displayed. Expired in 2022. Well, that's two years ago. So I checked it through motor vehicle through our system. And sure enough, it expired. So I activated the stop, walked up. A gentleman, very, very kind. I explained to him why I was stopping him. He had no proof of insurance. He stated it was his dad's vehicle that he was driving. Now, I would just say legally, if you're in constructive possession of a vehicle, like driving it, you are responsible for the paperwork on that vehicle, insurance, registration, everything else comes with it. So um, to include equipment. So he says, my dad's vehicle. I'm making an air, running an errand for my mom. I said, okay, okay. I said, well, your plates are expired. I've already verified it. No insurance. I went back, wrote him a citation, came up, gave him the citation. And this is between what I call the difference between a spirit of the law and a letter of the law. Letter means this is what the law states will happen. This is a spirit, which goes back to maybe the whys. So um, so I get done right and get issuing the citation to him. And he said, Sheriff, can I, can I explain um, What's going on in my life? I said, of course. I mean, of course. I, I We're all here to listen. I said, of course you can. His dad had passed away the day before. And his mom asked him to run down to pick up some stuff for his mom. That's why he said, I'm running this errand for my mom. And I'm like, wow. I said, he just passed away yesterday? He goes, yeah, just yesterday he passed away. So the deputy is with me, looked at me. I'm like, so I called the gentleman. After he pulled away, and uh, after I thought about it, called him. I said, "Sir, I said, is the car back home?" He goes, "Yes." Why? And first he goes, "Who is it?" I go, "It's the sheriff." I said, "Is the car back home?" He goes, "Yes." I said, "Listen, I'm all about the the human side of why we do things, and then uh, we adjust from there with the with the rule of law in place, of course." But I told him, I said, "Listen, here here's what I'm going to ask you to do." Do not move that vehicle until the registration insurance updated. He goes, we're going to go down. I talked to my mom. We're going to go down tomorrow, which is today, to take care of that. I said, great. I, I appreciate that. I'm also going to avoid the ticket because of the fact, I mean, and I wish, blame that on me. I, we should have talked more. I said, but usually people will tell me what the reason is, um, and I'm not going to force that out of you. But obviously, when you told me your story, that's a real story to me. So um, I'm voiding the ticket. He goes, well, Sheriff, you didn't have to do that. I said, no, but that's what makes us special here. And that's our culture. We're here to help people. We're not here to put detours in their lives unless, unless it's aggravated or something that needs to be addressed. This was simple enough. This is what they call discretion by a law enforcement officer. So, again, uh, my condolences to him and his family. And what's neat about the culture at the sheriff's office is you give this latitude to your deputies as well. It's not just the sheriff did this. No, and that I tell people all the time. And, you know, 
that based on our culture, they have the empowerment to write citations to arrest people. As long as it's within the scope of law, their culture, and their training, uh, we do that. I have not yet dismissed a ticket by a deputy since I've been sheriff for 12 years. I don't plan to. That's why the, the men and women that wear the robe, judges, they make those decisions. I don't. When I become the judge and the as enforcer, something's wrong in our system. Let the judges make that decision. If they write a bad ticket, there's something called a lesson there. Let the judge <laughs> educate our deputies on that, and then they will. I mean, if my deputies write a bad ticket, because I've been down that road before, and they'll say, Deputy, why did you write this? You realize when deputy, a judge asks that, you're probably not going to win a case. <laughs> you're probably going to be in trouble. Well, Sheriff, before you go, let's talk about your safety message of the week because it's getting warm out, and here comes the motorcycles. Well, I want to talk about two things, if I could, before I get out of here this morning. And um, and I, this is going back to, you know, it's National Police Week next week. We'll be recognized. we got, like I said, that's why we do the Top Cop, but we're going to be honoring our, our, our fallen next week and, and all those that serve, too. I think it's very important. But it goes back to who we are as an agency in Cochise County. So this morning, at 2 o'clock this morning, a little after 2 o'clock, I get a call. I, I, Carol, I thought it was you based on uh, Carol's got a Pacific. When she calls, it's uh, no caller. They don't tell me who it is. And Carol's one one of two that does that to me. So I'm thinking, Carol's calling me at 2 in the morning. What's going on? You know, And, and it's not a common for my phone to ring at 2 o'clock in the morning, but, but I thought this was Carol. So I picked it up, and this was an elderly gentleman. And I'm just going to, I won't say his name, but he's under hospice himself. He lives over by the New Mexico state line. Long story short is his wife of 50 some years passed away several days ago. And he had called me to tell me that, that his wife had passed away. Well, this was him calling me and he said, Sheriff, I need help. And I said, what's wrong? He goes, my son's here from the East Coast and he's stranded at the airport. He goes, what are we gonna do? <laughs> now this man, served our country, retired Navy, and he's also uh, worked in as a state trooper in Maryland, I think it was Maryland or back east somewhere, and then worked for the Fed, I think it was DEA. So he's got a public service career. He has spent 40, 50 years working in the public sector too, protecting the country and community. So I said, okay. So I said, can you share your son's number with me? So I called the son to see, okay, what's really going on? And I asked him, his son, son goes, who is this? I go, I'm the sheriff here. And he goes, sheriff, why are you calling me? <laughs> I said, well, your dad called me. He says, you're stranded. Now, his son's 67 years old, so it's not like he's 21 or anything. And he goes, well, I said, did you just fly in? We don't have midnight flights coming in to Tucson Airport. And he goes, I was supposed to be here at 7. We had arranged transportation, but my flight, I called once the friendly skies, got all delayed, and I didn't get here until just about two o'clock this morning too and now the rental car i can't get a rental car because they're closed there is no more transportation that was arranged they left me <laughs> so but sheriff don't you worry about it I'll, I'll find a way i said i'm not going to leave you away from your dad with everything going on so i got up got dressed drove to tucson airport picked this gentleman up i had a good talk with him brought him back Met with one of my team members who took him the rest of the way over there to be with his dad during this time. But uh, that's who we are as a sheriff's office. And uh, I call one of my guys. I call a couple of my guys. And we have a very strong veteran base in our sheriff's office. And I said, this is a vet. This is a former public safety uh, professional. And we got it, Sheriff. We got this. We got him back here. And uh, so I got home about 6 o'clock just to do the show here. So, But that's who we are. And I think it's important to tell those stories because there's so many negative stories out there. People like to talk crap let me just say it about you know bad things social media i can why the sheriff i'm like this this kid we arrested with the gun um you know why did it take a week we arrested him in 24 hours with a search warrant but we didn't post it till a week later so it's like we're not neglecting and if we do neglect we own it we own mm -hmm. it but either way that's who we are i'm very proud to serve the men and women as we go into the police week here in cochise county all right well now let's talk about motorcycles yeah, it's tis the season I mean, it's warm out. Motorcycles are out there. Be careful. Keep an eye on them. After my motorcycle, and I'm a fan of motorcycles. I've been riding since I'm 16. Rode one to high school when I was a young kid back in the Midwest, even in the snow. But um, long story short is they need to be careful also. It, it's a dual purpose safety message. For the riders out there, I mean, not everybody sees you. And for people riding cars, be careful. And the new law that they can split traffic lanes when they're stopped, not driving down the road when they're stopped. 
So if you see a motorcycle come up next to you at a stop sign and they're coming through, splitting traffic, splitting the lane, however you want to look at it, that is legal. Don't open your door. Don't <laughs> get all upset. That is legal. So just everybody be careful with that. It is a season. We have a lot out there. It's great. This is a great state to ride motorcycles. So please be safe. And Sheriff Mark Daniels, we thank you for coming and talking to us today. Thank you, everyone. Carol, Grady, and, uh, and again, top cop today, 11 o'clock Cochise College. So we'll see what happens. Thank All right. You. Carol, who do we have coming in next? We have Tombstone Marshal Jim Adams. First Watch on KWCD Country is brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. Giving you an inside look to your sheriff's office. Let's go back to First Watch on KWCD. And it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. I'm Grady Butler. With me is Carol Kappas and our next guest. Welcome back, Cochise County, and good morning, Tombstone Marshal Jim Adams. Good morning, Grady and Carol. Thank you so much for having me on First Watch. Really appreciate that. Thank you. So you've got the dog days of Tombstone, and it's tomorrow. We've been talking about it, it seems like forever. This this has become quite the event. Yes, sir. You know, we, uh, my wife and I came up with this uh, idea to, uh, to combine the historic nostalgia of Tombstone with everyone's love for dogs uh, just a couple months ago. And we started with nothing other than that idea. I uh, went to the mayor and uh, pitched it to him. He says, man, it sounds like a great idea. Make it happen. And after that, it was just a tremendous outpouring of support from our community in Tombstone and from all around the county and, and really around the country. We, we literally have people coming in from New Mexico, California, Idaho, and Connecticut that I know of uh, to attend this event. Now, we're going to talk about the event in a minute, but first let's talk about what this event is going to be benefiting. Absolutely. So the uh, the initial idea was to, uh, one, raise awareness for people to understand what a service dog is and isn't, what a working dog can do and can't do, and to raise money not only for the Marshal's Office Canine Program, but also for the uh, International Alliance for the Ability and Science, which is a nonprofit that my wife and, and uh, Melissa Koffel formed several years ago to provide scholarships for people with disabilities to, to get into higher education. That sounds, I mean, this is like a win, 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 and it's in Tombstone. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's going to be great. So let's talk about the event. So it kicks off tomorrow with what? 10 o'clock a.m. We're going to start with a parade at uh, 3rd and Allen Street. It's going to go right down the middle of historic Allen Street. It's going to be led by um, the um, Tombstone High School's Junior ROTC uh, Honor Guard, but they're going to be mounted. They're the only one in the country that has a mounted color guard. So they're going to lead our parade with uh, with our uh, American flag. Uh, followed that with uh, our Grand Marshal. Uh, I insisted it be my wife. Um, she did it reluctantly, but this is an event to support her cause. So I made her the Grand Marshal, and, and uh, one of our locals, John Rogers, provided us with a, a big, beautiful white horse for her to ride. Uh, following that's going to be the Arizona Rangers mounted. Uh, we're going to have a big Irish wolfhound uh, group that's going to be there followed by a whole bunch of dogs and pets and snakes and every other thing. Uh, and bringing up the rear is going to be um, the police working dogs. And then myself, the mayor, and Samson, the service dog in science, who was the ambassador uh, for service dogs. And uh, he just retired about a week ago, but he's going to be there to get uh, lots of love and pets from all of his big fans. And then once you, the parade is over, it's not done yet. Absolutely. So we're going to have opening ceremony. should start about 1030 on the Discover Tombstone Field, which is at about 7th and Allen Street. Um, we'll have um, naturally a posting of the colors. Um, Candy Carpenter is going to sing our national anthem. She's from the band Wanted. Um, following that, we're going to have invocation. The mayor is going to do a proclamation. Uh, we are actually going to swear in our canines. Uh, so they'll be receiving their badges tomorrow, which will be, uh, be a really cool event. Um, we've got a couple of brief announcements, and then we're going to kick it off with uh, bite dogs and drug detection dogs, service dogs, flying frisbee dogs, um, uh, just a whole day full of events. Uh, there'll be food. Uh, Bam Bam Barbecue is going to be there. Um, if you want some, get there early because no matter how much he brings, he sells out. Um, so we'll have plenty of food vendors, uh, plenty of other vendors that are, that are animal-specific. And, uh, and lots of animal rescues. I think we have six animal rescues coming. Uh, so if you're looking for a forever friend to take home, um, come visit them. And I've seen the t-shirts for this event. You can purchase those, can't you? Absolutely. They look so cool. They are really cool. And I, you know, I give a lot of credit to, um, uh, to Goose Flats 
Um, they came up with the logo, and then uh, uh, John Levon over at Extreme Apparel actually made the shirts for us, and they are really nice. Um, you can get those there at the event. Um, also, if you purchase a, um, a collectible uh, lanyard, uh, which comes with a dog tag and, uh, and a wristband, uh, you'll be able to get one of those t-shirts for half price and the wristband will also get you discounts at our just tons of sponsors in the city um, that are offering um, different things this event has everything it does that's amazing <laughs> it's like its own little um fair it, it is it is going to be spectacular and i would be remiss if i did not tell you that Smokey the bear is celebrating his 80th birthday at our event so Smokey the Bear and Woodsy the Owl will be there with the Forest Service uh, celebrating his birthday. I think they're handing out cupcakes. Oh, very nice, very nice. And a lot of sponsors. Let's let's uh, let's thank them so much because this kind of event, as big as it is, needs all those sponsors. And the community stepped up. A absolutely. And, and I'm going to start with uh, the anonymous sponsors. We had so many people just anonymously donate money to this event, and we are grateful. Whoever you are out there, thank you. Um, we are grateful for that. Um, but community sponsors, again, huge outpouring of support because um, Tombstone is a very dog-friendly uh, city. So um, there's dogs on the boardwalk all day, every day. Uh, most of the establishments allow um, pets in, um, and, all, of course, all of them allow service dogs in. Um, but we have a lot of great sponsors. Um, Shootout Arena, who's actually going to have bull riding that night uh, following our event at 7 o'clock. So ours ends at 5, theirs starts at 7. Uh, so go downtown, get something to eat, and go check out the bull riding. Um, Circle K gave us 75 cases of water yesterday, so we'll be um, selling those for donations. Uh, Culver's here in Sierra Vista donates, uh, is donating 100 pup cups, which is the little custard cups with a, like a milk bone in it. Uh, we'll be selling those again for donations, so thank you to Circle K and Culver's. Um, and then all of our businesses in Tombstone, and I, I can't even, I don't have the list in front of me, but there's a bunch of them. Um, they either gave us uh, items for our raffle, there'll be a big raffle, uh, silent auction, and, uh, and again, discounts at, at our various sponsors. Uh, just so, I'm so grateful for, for the community that we have in Tombstone. All right, so invite everybody to the event. Give us the dates, times, and, and everything for tomorrow. Absolutely. Tomorrow, Saturday, May 11th, 10 a.m. at uh, 3rd and Allen. The, the parade will go from there down to 7th and Allen. Discover Tombstone Field. It's going to go till 5 o'clock. Uh, but you don't want to miss the parade. Uh, you don't want to miss the opening ceremony. At 3 o'clock, we have the uh, pet costume contest. Um, 4 o'clock, we'll be announcing uh, the raffle winners and silent auction winners. And again, uh, food. We're going to have live music from the um, uh, Mustang Mountain Cowboy Church. They're going to be playing some bluegrass, some country, some rock, some gospel. Um, it's it's just going to be an exciting event. It sounds like it is going to be the place to be tomorrow in Tombstone. Yes, sir. Well, Marshall Adams, we thank you for coming and talking to us today and letting us know all about the event. Thank you for having me. And, Carol, how do they get a hold of us at the Sheriff's Office? Reach out to, um, give us a call, 520-432-9500, or social media, Cochise County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Mark J. Daniels. That'll hook you into our X account and our um, Facebook page excuse me, in our Instagram. And we also have our webpage at uh, CochiseCounty.az. Excuse me, I can't even remember. <laughs> Cochise.az.gov slash sheriff. Having a little bit of an issue today. So that's how you can reach out and touch us. All right. And Marshall Adams, you have something else to say before we go? Yes, absolutely. And if you want more information on the event, our Facebook page, Dog Days of Tombstone. Excellent. That's Very be good. Yeah, it's going to be a good day tomorrow. I can't wait to check that out. First Watch on KWCD Country. It's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. You've been listening to First Watch, brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. Keep up to date. Follow the Cochise County Sheriff's Office on Facebook. And tune in next Friday, 7 a.m. for First